In 1899, a struggling railman in Central America partnered with the budding Boston Fruit Company to form the United Fruit Company. The goal? Make the banana the cheapest fruit in the USA. The scope of the company grew quickly and enormously. The company's reach was so ubiquitous that it became known throughout Central America as El Pulpo, or the octopus. United Fruit created a transport monopoly. If you wanted to move fruit over land, you did it with UFC. The company controlled shipping and all major ports in the region. Cheap land and cheaper labor were guaranteed by propping up repressive regimes. Yeah. Radio networks ensured logistical efficiency and served as ready outlets for propaganda. Bananas son la via para la democracia. Soon, everybody who was anybody owned United Fruit stock. And Washington quickly decided that what was good for bananas was good for the USA. UFC had entered every part of its workers' lives. And in December of 1928, in Colombia's Santa Marta Banana Zone, the workers had had enough and organized a strike. They wanted to be paid money instead of company scrip, along with a six-day work week, an eight-hour work day, and a written contract commensurate with working conditions in the United States. But they were immediately labeled communists and radicals by the Colombian government, U.S. Embassy, and UFC. On December 6, 1928, El Pupo demonstrated its power. All of this was done with the full support of the U.S. State Department, as a marine frigate observed the situation from the harbor. Jack, send this off to Washington. I have the honor to report that the Bogota representative of the United Fruit Company told me yesterday that the total number of strikers killed by the Colombian military exceeded 1,000. 